Hellblade will follow Senua's dark and harrowing journey into a hellish underworld. She needs to feel real, nuanced, complex and believable. For cutscenes in a typical AAA game, a voice artist delivers the dialogue, another actor performs the body motion, and animators hand key the face and cameras. It can take a team of 30 or 40 artists to stitch together all of the cutscenes in this way. Our entire team on Hellblade is 13 people, yet we still believe that there is a way to shoot and produce high quality cutscenes on a budget. Ever since we shot Heavenly Sword 10 years ago at Weta Digital, we've always captured face, body and voice simultaneously, and that's what we call performance capture. Noriko, we have to get out of here! Ah! Noriko, help me! Leave her alone! <laughs> Heavenly Sword was the first game to use performance capture, yet it's still rarely used in games today. The perception is that it's too difficult and too expensive for most games, even in the AAA bracket. We don't have the budget to shoot cutscenes in a performance capture studio like we have done in our previous games, so instead we started prototyping homebrew uh, hardware and software solutions to see if we could find another way. Our first prototype rig consisted of several GoPro cameras with different lenses, so pairs of cameras would capture the face in 3D, uh, the body and also pick up on visual markers around the room. And the idea was that you'd be able to capture face, body, and even the camera position anywhere in 3D space um, without having to have a purpose-built studio. The device was giving us data, but it soon became clear that we needed more time and more resources than we had available to make it robust enough for commercial use. So we contacted our friends at Vicon, who are leading players in high-end motion capture solutions, to see if they could help us out within our limitations on Hellblade. Thankfully, Vicon were able to find a solution that worked within our constraints. They sent us 12 of their Bonita cameras and a blade server to drive them. We don't have space in our studio for shooting, so we cleared out our largest meeting room and to mount the Bonita cameras, we bought some cheap wardrobe posts from IKEA, which did the job nicely. We did some tests and the body data we got back were easily as good as anything we've ever captured before. So we moved on to our next challenge, which is how do you capture the face? As facial performance is captured with video, we needed good even lighting in the room. Studio lights are very expensive, but we found an alternative solution, cheap LED lights that we bought from Amazon. Now we had good even lighting, we could capture the face using video. And to do this, we had previously created a prototype using a cricket helmet, some umbrella wire and a webcam. Using the cricket helmet, we could capture facial expressions and then we started developing our own facial solver. The facial solver is needed to interpret the video feed into real-time 3D facial expressions. I want each person here to give George their report by Thursday afternoon. <laughs> so lovely, Stuart. You fucking wooly. For the shoot proper, we would need a much more robust solution than the cricket helmet. So for that, Vicon kindly lent us their high-end Cara head rig, which consists of four cameras, which allows you to capture the full 3D facial expression of the actor. Despite good results, we're still looking for even more cost-effective solutions, including 3D printing our own helmet. So now we knew we could capture the face, but you still need to convert that video feed into a believable real-time digital double. And to create a digital double, we used a technique called photogrammetry, which is able to construct a 3D face from a series of photographs. But instead of just using still photographs, we used GoPro cameras, and that way we could capture the full range of expressions as they happen. And to capture even finer levels of detail, such as uh, skin pores and wrinkles, we created another prototype device called the Plant Pot. And it's called a Plant Pot because it's actually housed within a Plant Pot casing. And inside we've set up some LED lights and it's controlled with a Raspberry Pi and some custom code. So the idea is that you could put this onto any surface and by triggering the lights you can capture still photographs with different lighting conditions. And from that you can create a very high res normal map which uh, captures very precise details. So now we had a solution for both the face and the body, but we also wanted to capture the camera itself, which is very much a part of visual storytelling. And to do that, we built a further rig. On it, we attached a GoPro camera 
a portable LCD screen and put markers on the, on the rig so that every nuance of the camera could be captured on set in the scene. Finally, to capture audio, we rented a wireless recording system. Our room isn't soundproof, but even so, we were pleasantly surprised with the result. It meant that we wouldn't have to record audio separately. But we're still pushing other areas and other types of performance capture. Um, these are highly experimental and may or may not produce results. With just a few thousand pounds, we now had a setup in the studio that would allow us to capture a full performance. Face, body, voice and cameras. We also hope to show that uh, a small team with limited means is still able to capture high-end character performances and this is something that up until now has only been the preserve of big budget AAA studios. So to fully test our setup and see if all the pieces of the puzzle come together, we conducted a test shoot and we're still putting this together and it's something that we hope to show you soon.